Bond Swing Breakdown. In this video, we will break down the swing of arguably the best hitter of all time. And if you watch until the end, you will learn the secret drills and tips that will help you be more consistent, which means you will be more confident at the plate. These drills will give you a repeatable swing, which will make the game more fun. And lastly, these drills will increase your power, which will make you stand out. These drills and tips are what I have personally learned from Barry Bonds or someone very close to him has shared with me. Okay, so for all the new people who are not familiar with me, my name is Jermaine Curtis and I'm and back in 2007 was the first time I met Barry Bonds. I was playing at UCLA and he was at the tail end of his career. I'm guessing he lived near the campus because he would train there in the off season. Well, fast forward a little bit, he taught me some stuff that changed my view on hitting. And what I'm going to share with you today helped me get drafted to play professional baseball and play in the major leagues. Okay, so the first thing I want you to see is his rhythm. Notice how slow he is. Notice how comfortable he looks in the batter's box. The pitcher in this video is probably throwing low to mid 90s and Barry Bonds looks as comfortable as watching TV on a Sunday evening. See, all great players have this confident feel, this slow rhythm, their rhythm, and it's important that you find yours. The drill I have for you that will help you find your rhythm is the Jazzy Drill. I learned this drill from Tony Gwynn, and Tony Gwynn was close with the Bonds family, so I know he knows about it. The Jazzy Drill is very simple, but before explaining it, let me share with you how it came about. I was hitting in the cage and I was a young hitter, thinking I was the man crushing balls in the cage in front of Tony Gwynn. And Tony noticed that I seemed a bit out of control and not in tune with myself. I had been a good hitter, but still there was some improvement I had to make. So anyways, he stopped me while I was hitting and said, man, you need to slow your body down. If you do this, you're going to slow the game down and ultimately you will have more success. I was sold, especially since I was learning from someone who was a great hitter. But I didn't understand how I could slow my body down. And I'm the type of person that asks questions. So the first thing I said is, how do I do that? He said, with the jazzy drill. He then walked over to the stereo, which at this time was playing a 50 cent song, and put on some jazz. As the song played, he said, sink yourself to it. Be slow. You can always speed up, and you will speed up during the game naturally. But if you're slow in practice, you will be more successful in the game. After that day, when I had felt rushed or inconsistent or like I didn't see the ball well, I always went back to the jazzy drill and it always got me back to where I needed to be. The next thing I want you to notice is the way his bat is straight up. Most Hall of Famers have their bat straight up, literally straight up. Just to name a few, you have Ernie Banks, Ted Williams, Beirut, and the list goes on. But if you have the bat straight, you need a bit of movement to get everything going. So the next thing I want you to notice is his barrel tip. The barrel tip keeps everything in sync and could be labeled into the first point rhythm, but I wanted to I wanted it to be separate. And when I asked Barry, why do you do the barrel tip? His reply was, it's like putting a hammer in your fingers and hitting a nail. I was a bit confused. He continued, see most hitters are trying to knock the pitcher out with one blow. I'm trying to jab him. I want to be quick to the ball with my hands. I want to feel like a hammer in my fingers like if if like if i was hitting a nail that's how i want my barrel to feel i want the barrel to be like the head of a hammer and the handle being my fingers so i could be direct and quick to the ball i also want the pitcher to not know how to get me out like i said before most people try and knock the pitcher out with one blow they try and hit a home run every swing. I want to get eight hits out of 10 and bats and have the pitcher have nightmares about me. I understood what he was saying. He liked the feel of being handsy. And it makes sense. It didn't matter how hard a pitcher threw. He would hit the crap out of it. The first time he faced it. Bunch swings, and there it goes. It's headed for the coming call. It is gone, a home run. 
So the next point I want you to see is how his hands get up after he barrel tips. If you are going to barrel tip, you got to make sure you bring that bat up to where it needs to be. The drill I recommend is extreme high T. The drill I recommend is extreme high T. It's one of those drills that creates that handsy feel, but teaches your hands to get up, get back up, and gets your top hand working, which Barry absolutely loves. More on that in due time. When you do the extreme high T, focus on being square. This means shoulders in line with the pitcher. This is similar to the drill Christian Yeller recommended as it's going to clean up all that unnecessary movements in your swing. The next thing I want you to notice is how he stays on his backside and is balanced. In the late 90s and early 2000s, this is what they were teaching and mostly all big league players were doing this style of hitting, which was eliminating extra movement and staying on your backside. The drill I recommend is the catch drill. Barry Bonds absolutely loved this drill, and this drill quickly became one of my go-to drills and favorite drills. The way you do this drill is, if you are a right-handed hitter, you would put a glove on your right hand, and if you are a left-hand hitter, you would put a glove on your left hand. What you wanna do is have someone flip you the ball and you catch it with your top hand. This drill teaches you to let the ball come to you, which means you will stay on your backside, teaches you to stay square as long as possible, teaches you to track the ball all the way to the hitter's zone, which will teach you to strike zone, teach you to get on path on the ball so you can be more consistent, and teaches you how to have a strong base, which is the most important part of hitting. A strong base means being balanced. If you wanna make it a bit more advanced, you could do it off a pitching machine. That's one of my favorites because it slows the ball down in the game and teaches you the strike zone. If you can't catch it, it's more than likely a ball. The next thing I want you to see is his shoulders. You notice how Barry kind of crouches over the plate a little as he's about to swing? This little crouch creates his angles where he can drive up and through the ball, which allows him to hit for power. It's very important, but no one ever talks about it. See, your bat follows your shoulders. Look at a golf player. Notice how the golf player swings and the ball goes up. Look how they are crouched over the ball. On the flip side, most single hitters swing standing straight up. It's more of an east to west swing with their shoulders especially. When I was hitting with Barry, I would ask him, how do you drive the ball in the air? And he never really gave me an answer where I understood. Most answers were swing down and put backspin on the ball, which yeah, that works, but not the answer that I was looking for or the one that consistently gives the result. I was looking for so so I started watching his videos over and over and over and over and over and over and I noticed how he presets his angles with the shoulders so the drill I recommend is watching yourself in a full mirror getting ready to hit and crouching over just a little bit you're gonna have to take some time to learn this but once you do it you're going to unlock that power within the next thing I want you to see is how his swing is so short but he gets extended through it. When you have a swing that's short, this will allow you to catch up to any pitch and give you the confidence that you can hit anything. The drill I recommend is the top hand drill. When we hit together, we focused a lot on our top hand. We used a small bat and we started with soft toss. The goal is hit it with the top hand and continue through it. So we are not trying to hit low line drives. We want line drives to have an upward angle. The last thing I want you to notice is the finish of his swing. He keeps turning and can walk out of his swing. And an A swing is a swing where you should be able to walk out of it after the swing. The drill I recommend is a simple drill. Just take front toss and after a full swing, walk out of your swing. 
The best part about this drill is if you are not balanced, you will not be able to walk out of it. So it teaches you to be balanced. Okay, so I thought I would add a few bonuses that you can do. That Barry Bonds and I would do together that I did not talk about in this breakdown. Also when they include some information that's gonna give you ridiculous results and bring all of this together. So make sure you go and hit the like button as well as the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications so you can join the Pros Cave family and receive more videos like this. It will help me help more players, so please go do that if you have found some value in this video. Okay, so the first bonus is to hit off a pitching machine. Most players hate hitting off a pitching machine, and I get it, it's hard. It's hard because there is little to no rhythm and you can't time it up. Plus, the ball is not consistent. These are exactly the very reasons why you should be hitting off a machine. It's also what made Barry Bonds so great. He lived off hitting off a machine and at max velocity. He hit off the machine, we turned it up to high speeds. And after every time we squared the ball up, we would go closer to the machine. I would get as close as 10 feet away from the machine, but Barry was like five feet away and still squaring it up, squaring each ball up. Once you go as close as you can, work your way back. Each time you hit a line drive, take a step back, all the way back to home plate. This is why he looked so comfortable off of high pitching velocities. He had trained himself to hit off high velocity. And since you can't get much rhythm or timing off a machine, it forces you to get ready to hit. Then all you need to do is just react to good pitches. This is how you'll be able to be more consistent as a hitter because you will slow the game down and you will notice the ball will go slower and you will naturally pull balls correctly. This was my experiences and I hit off the machine so much my teammates they call me a machine killer. By the way it absolutely translated over into the game. The next bonus I want to share with you is having a sidearm BP pitcher. Barry had a lefty sidearm BP pitcher that he would face pretty often. Often. The reason was he knew teams would throw a lefty against him late in the innings. And if he could stay on a sidearm pitcher from the left side, he would hit any other pitcher, hands down, no question. So his goal was not to open up. So if you could find the sidearm pitcher to throw against you and you train yourself to not open up, you will crush every pitcher. So I didn't actually get a sidearm BP thrower, but what I did was put a machine at an angle. Since I'm a right-handed hitter, I put the machine where it started a little from behind me and came in at an angle. This taught me to keep my front shoulder closed, and the more you keep your front shoulder closed, the better you will be as a hitter. The last bonus I have for you is the most important of them all. See, the drills work, but without what I'm going to share with you, it doesn't take you to the next level. The only thing you are missing is the approach at the plate. If you don't know what an approach is, it's basically your plan before stepping up to the plate. When I was hitting with Barry, he, he asked me, where are the pitchers taught to throw the ball? I said, down. He said, mistakes are up in the zone. So when we did the catch drill, high T, hit off a T, hit off a machine, hit curve balls, etc., we had all of them up in the zone, in the strike zone, up in the strike zone. This way, we trained our eyes to hit the mistakes. And if you set your sights higher, you will be in more hitters counts. The reason why is because pitchers are taught to throw off speed pitches down in the zone. If you take it, they will be balls, giving you a better chance of hitting mistakes as they will bring the ball up. See, I started to drive the ball more just because I had a winning plan. If you look at Christian Yellich's home runs, majority of all his home runs are balls up in the zone. For him, Michaelis throws. Fly ball, center field. Bader back at the track, and it is gone! And a fly ball hit back in the deep right field. Number four for Christian Yelich. The last two years. Here's Yelich on the first pitch. Way back, right center, and this. So practice on raising your sights up in the zone. Then go in the game with that approach. It's gonna be a game changer. 
If you enjoyed watching this video and you found some value, hit that like button, subscribe to the Pros Cave channel, and turn on bell notifications for more videos like this. Thank you for watching. I'm signing out.